welcome my friends to a new episode of Kids Trivia. Today we are going to have a new competition, two new teams and a new theme. And today our theme is Matthew 1. Okay, so let's start first by introducing our teams. Let's start by this team. What's your name and how old are you? Hi, I'm Roger and I'm 11. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm 11. Hi, I'm Marina and I'm 10. Hi, I'm Marola and I'm 11. Good to have you today. And what about this team? What's your name and how old are you? Hi, I'm Daniel and I'm 10. I'm, Dan I'm Marina and I am 10 and a half. I'm Anthony and I'm 10. I'm Carlos and I'm 10. It's nice having you today. And now I'm going to ask each team to choose a name for, the, for their team. And you have 50 seconds. Start. Are you done? Okay, Mark? St. Nicholas. Nicholas? Okay, what about this team, Marina? Pope Carolus. Pope Carolus? Okay, so we have St. Nicholas and Pope Carolus. Okay, are you ready for the competition? Yes! Yeah. All right, let's start. And the first question is for St. Nicholas. And the question is, Matthew mentions the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of A. Isaiah, B. Moses, C. Abraham, D. Elijah, and you have 50 seconds. All right, are you done? Yes. Okay, Roger. We pick C. C, Abraham? Okay, is this your final answer? Yes. Okay. Let's listen to the story. At the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, he mentions the genealogy of Jesus Christ. This means the history of his family. Who were his father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather? In the old days, the Jews used to keep records of all the people born, like we do now, but now we have computers. Back then, they only had to do charts that are written and they write all the names of the people born. When they look into these charts, they found that Jesus, the son of Joseph, had a great, great grandfather called David, King David. And David had a great, great grandfather called Abraham. Abraham, whom we know, the father of Isaac. The answer is C, correct answer. Good job. So now the score is one point for St. Nicholas. And the next question is for Pope Carolus. And the question is, When Joseph knew that the Virgin Mary was pregnant, he wanted to A. Send her back to the temple B. Divorce her C. Tell the high priest to stone her D. Tell everyone You have 50 seconds. Right, are you done? Yes. Okay, Daniel? Um, B, divorce her. Divorce her? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, let's listen to the story. So as you know, Joseph and Mary got engaged. But before they got married, Joseph found out that she's pregnant. Of course, he got so upset because he thought that she had another husband. He could have just sent her to the high priest who is going to judge in her case and she would get a very bad punishment. She would be stoned because nobody knows that this is the son of God. But because Joseph was so kind and he didn't want to make a scandal that would hurt her, he didn't do that. Yeah, when we see someone doing something wrong, we don't have to go tell everybody. See what they did? Maybe we need to talk to them quietly or pray for them. That's what Joseph did. He decided to divorce Virgin Mary quietly without getting her into trouble. The answer is B, correct answer. Good job. 
So now the score is one point for Pope Carolus and one point for Saint Nicholas. And the next question is for Saint Nicholas. And the question is, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him that Mary will give birth to a son who will save the people from A. Poverty B. Their sins C. The Romans D. The Flood and you have 50 seconds. Are you done? Okay, Mark? B, their sins. Their sins? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, let's listen to the story. Of course, Joseph decided to divorce Virgin Mary because he didn't know that she got pregnant through the Holy Spirit and her son was the son of God. He thought that she committed a sin, but God had everything planned. An angel of the Lord appeared to him while he was sleeping and he told him, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary because her son is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus. And the name Jesus means the Lord saves because Jesus will save his people from bad things that are making them unworthy of being with God in his kingdom. He saved us from sin. The answer is the correct answer. Good job. So now the score is two points for St. Nicholas and one point for Pope Carolus. And the next question is for Pope Carolus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Magi from blank came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born the King of the Jews? A, North. B, South. C, West. D, East. And you have 50 seconds. Twenty-five seconds left. Are you done? Yes. Okay, Marina? The East. The East? Is this your final answer? Yes. Okay, let's listen to the story. All right, the Magi, also known as the wise men. They were experts in medicine and astronomy. This means that they knew everything about the sun, stars, planets, moons, anything in the space. They used to hear stories from their grandfathers and great-grandfathers about a, st a special star. When this star appears, it will be a sign saying that a great king has been born. So as soon as they saw that star, they got very excited. This is the star that they've been hearing about for years. So they started packing and preparing themselves to follow this star wherever it goes. They traveled a very long distance on camels. So probably it took them months to reach Jesus. See how much they were excited to see the great king? They came all the way from the east to Jerusalem just to see Jesus. The answer is the correct answer. Good job. So now the score is two for Pope Carolus and two for Saint Nicholas. And the next question is for Saint Nicholas. And the question is, King Herod told the Magi that he wanted to know where Jesus is so that he may go and A, worship him, B, kill him, C, Give him gifts. D, take him and you have 50 seconds. Are you done? Yeah. Okay, uh, Marina? 
Um, we think it is worship him. B, worship him? Okay, let's listen to the story. As the Magi reached Jerusalem, they were so happy. They made it. And they said, this great king must be born in a king's palace. Let's go look for him in Herod's palace. Because he was the king at that time. As they reached the palace and they met King Herod, they told him, we want to see the born baby, the king of the Jews. Herod got so angry when he heard that from the Magi. He got so jealous and worried about his throne. He thought that there was a king born and this king will take his place. He wanted to know where he is so that he can plan to kill him. But of course, he wouldn't say that to the Magi because if he said so, they're not gonna tell him where Jesus is. So he just told them that he wanted to know where Jesus is so that he may go and worship him. The answer is A, correct answer. Good job. And now the score is three for St. Nicholas and two for Pope Carolus. And the next question is for Pope Carolus. The question is, the Magi offered Jesus three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What does the frankincense represent? A, kingship. B, miracles. C, communion. D, priesthood. And you have 50 seconds. Twenty-five seconds left. You're done? Okay, Anthony. A, kingship. Kingship? Mm -hmm. Frankincense represents kingship? Yeah. Is this your final answer? Yes. Okay, let's listen to the story. So, when the Magi found out that Jesus wasn't in Herod's place, they went out looking for him again. The bright star appeared again and they followed it all the way from Herod's place to Bethlehem. When they found the baby, they were so happy and they bowed down and worshiped him. And as you all know, they gave him three gifts, gold, myrrh, and frankincense. They offered him gold because he's a king. He's our king. The myrrh represents suffering and death because Jesus was gonna suffer and die for us on the cross so that he may save us from our sins. Finally, they offered him frankincense. It's like the incense that Abuna uses in the censer during the liturgy. You know that Jesus gave us his body and blood on the cross? Also, Abuna gives us Jesus' body and blood in the communion. So Jesus is like the king of all priests. So this gift, frankincense, represents Jesus being a priest. The answer is priesthood, D. It's a wrong answer, sorry. But we still have more questions, don't get discouraged. And now the score is two for Pope Carolus and three for Saint Nicholas. And the next question is for Saint Nicholas. And the question is, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted. Which prophet said that? A. Isaiah B. Jeremiah C. David D. Hosea and you have 50 seconds. Twenty-five seconds left. You're done? Okay, Marola. Um, we picked C, David. C, David? Yeah. Is this your final answer? Yeah. Okay, let's listen to the story. After the Magi visited Jesus, God warned them in a dream telling them not to go back to Herod and tell him where Jesus is. Because Herod wants to kill Jesus. So immediately they went back to their country and they even went through another route. 
so that Herod wouldn't find them. Also, God has warned Joseph in a dream, telling him that he has to take Mary and her child and escape to Egypt because Herod is going to look for Jesus and kill him. When Herod found that the Magi didn't come back to him and that he couldn't find Jesus, he got so angry and he gave orders to kill all the kids in Bethlehem who were two years and under to make sure that Jesus was one of those children. The whole city was full of sadness because all these mothers who were weeping after they lost their children. So a long time ago lived a woman called Rachel, who was Jacob's wife. And one of the prophets has seen her in one of his visions, weeping over the children who were killed by Herod. This prophet was Jeremiah. The answer is B. Wrong answer, sorry. But you still have more questions. The score is three for St. Nicholas and two for Pope Carolus. And the next question is for Pope Carolus. And the question is, after Herod died, Joseph took Mary and Jesus and went back to Galilee and lived in a small town called A. Nazareth, B. Bethlehem, C. Samaria, D. Jerusalem, and you have 50 seconds. Okay, are you done? Okay, Carolus? They choose A. Nazareth? Yeah. Final mm -hmm. answer? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's listen to the story. So, after Herod died, the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him, now you can leave Egypt and go back. But as he approached Jerusalem, he heard that Archelaus, who was Herod's son, is now the king instead of his father. This man was known for being just as bad and ruthless as his father was. So Joseph was afraid that he might know about Jesus and try to kill him. So instead of going to Jerusalem, he decided to go to a farther place called Galilee and they lived in a small town called Nazareth. The answer is A, correct answer. Good job. So now the score is three for Pope Carolus and three for Saint Nicholas. And the next question is for Saint Nicholas. And the question is, therefore every tree which does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What does the tree represent? A. Man B. Punishment C. Angels D. Repentance And you have 50 seconds. <laughs> 25 seconds left. Okay, are you done? Okay, Roger? Um, we say A. Man? Okay, final answer? No, no, no. no. D, D. D. Is this your final answer? Is it A or D? D. A. A? A? Yes. Final answer? Yes. Okay, this is your last choice. Yes. Okay. Let's listen to the story. You know that John the Baptist was older than Jesus and he started preaching about the coming of Jesus. He was telling the people to repent and stop sinning and think about God's kingdom. He was saying that God is coming soon and that they have to prepare themselves because whoever is not prepared is gonna be punished. He gave them an example saying, the ax is laid to the root of the trees and every tree that doesn't bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The ax here means God, and the fruit means good things that people do. 
So like a tree that doesn't bear fruit is cut from its roots, also a man who doesn't do good things is always living in a sinful life will be punished by God. The answer is a correct answer. Good job. So now the score is four for St. Nicholas and three for Pope Carolus. And the next question is for Pope Carolus. And the question is, John the Baptist baptized the people with water. And this baptism represents A, love, B, joy, C, repentance, D, taking the Holy Spirit. And you have 50 seconds. Are you done? Okay. Daniel. C, um, repentance. Final answer? Yes. Okay. Let's listen to the story. After Jesus ascended into the heaven, he sent us a great gift on the day of the Pentecost. He sent us his Holy Spirit. Everyone who is baptized now receives the Holy Spirit and that Spirit lives in us and guides us in our lives. But before Jesus came, the people didn't have the Holy Spirit in baptism. John the Baptist was trying to teach them how to purify their hearts and prepare it for Jesus, who is going to give them the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist was only making the people repent. The answer is C, correct answer. Good job. And now the score is four points for St. Nicholas and four points for Pope Carolus. Both scores are tied. And this is the last question. Both of you won this competition. You did a great job today. Good job. Thank you very much for, for being with us today. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for watching us today. Have a blessed week. And we'll see you next time and more to know with Kiss Trivia.